Well, philosophers, at least certain old-fashioned philosophers, have wanted to, to peddle the idea that not only is there an explanatory gap between what we know about the nature of the brain and the uh, emergence of conscious phenomena, but that the explanatory gap is somehow mysterious and could never ever be closed. Now, first of all, notice that to conceive of the explanatory gap as something that you could never in principle close is to make a really strong prediction. It's a prediction about what science never ever will, even in the long haul, discover. And I think humility requires more of us. Humility requires that we recognize that very, very often in science we have discovered things which many centuries before would have seemed so mysterious as to be undiscoverable in principle. So my feeling is there are, of course, explanatory gaps. There's explanatory gaps all over the place with regard to neuroscience. We don't, for example, really understand yet how a brain gets built. We don't, there's so many questions that we have about the nature of neural development uh, that nobody could possibly say at this point that we really understand brain development. There are many aspects of learning that we don't understand, many aspects of the many memory systems that are still very, very puzzling. There are many aspects of perception, decision making, even of reflexes that we do not understand. We don't understand yet how it is that mammals maintain a constant temperature. There's an explanatory gap. So of course there are explanatory gaps. The question is, so what do you want to make of it? What I as a neurophilosopher want to make of it is, great, those are the places where we do research and close those gaps. Certain philosophers want to say, oh, but these gaps are so special that you'll never be able to close that gap. Uh, there's a conceptual distinction between mysteries and problems. We don't know where various uh, aspects of the world fall in those two categories. That's an empirical question. But the conceptual distinction nevertheless remains. I mean, assuming that we're not angels, let's assume that we're organic creatures, okay? If we're organic creatures, we have a fixed cognitive structure. Otherwise, we'd be angels, okay? So we have some fixed cognitive structure. Like any other uh, fixed structure of the organism, it has a scope and it has limits. Uh, we are genetically programmed so that we can become uh, humans and not bees, okay? We're not genetically programmed so we can become anything. If we were, if you could become anything, you'd never become any. You'd never become anything at all. You know, you'd just be some kind of a, a amoeboid creature. So, so we have internal structure that directs the process of growth in certain ways, allows uh, some changes, not others, uh, due to the environment, due to intrusion, and maybe some days people figure out a way to turn a bat into a mouse or something, but uh, there's a limit, you know. Uh, and uh, the same's got to be true of our cognitive structures, unless, of course, we're angels. So if we're not angels, then we have cognitive structures which are going to have scope and limits. Okay, that yields the distinction between problems and mysteries. Mysteries will be what lies beyond our cognitive limits, which must exist, unless we're angels. Uh, problems will be things that are within our cognitive limits. Now let's go to the question of vitalism. Well, it's an open question whether it's... A, uh, notice that the problem and mystery is, is a biological concept. It's relative to the organism. So what's a problem, a mystery for, say, a bee is not a mystery for me necessarily, and conversely, because uh, we have different cognitive structures. So the notion is relative to humans. It's a normal biological concept, just like... Uh, the visual system, say for my granddaughter, can become mammalian, but not insect. The same sort of distinction. Uh, but the question of what lies within the two categories is an empirical question to be discovered. So perhaps it was believed at one point that life is uh, beyond our cognitive reach. 
it's a mystery for humans, okay, it was discovered that it's not beyond our cognitive reach. Uh, Hume and Locke uh, argued that uh, the properties of motion are beyond our cognitive reach, and as Hume said, the Newton's greatest discovery was to have demonstrated that. As far as we understand, they're, as far as we know, they're correct, uh, but it's an empirical question. Uh, maybe someday we'll be able to comprehend uh, uh, not just the theories of motion, but the uh, what Locke and Hume and Galileo wanted, uh, comprehend it, really understand how these mysterious properties work, instead of being mystified by the fact that you know, I can move the moon by moving my hand, uh, as we are, of course. Uh, but uh, they're just two separate issues, and Churchill is just missing the point. There's a conceptual distinction, then there's an empirical question of what lies within uh, these domains. So like, take uh, particular cases, like, say, consciousness. We have no idea. Maybe it'll turn out to be like, uh, uh, like uh, motion. We'll be able to develop a theory of it, but it won't be. Uh, but, the, but, but we won't uh, be able to conceive of how the theory works. So it's like the fact that uh, I can't conceive of the fact that uh, uh, when you take a drop of water and you uh, send an electric current through it, it ends up as two gases. I mean, I know it happens because I learned it in a chemistry course, but I don't have the kind of conception of it that Galileo and Newton and the founders of modern science aimed for. And we've given up that hope. It doesn't matter what we can conceive of anymore. Uh, we accept what the best theoretical explanations give us. And it may turn out, probably very likely will turn out, that the, uh, that the that Priestley's approach to consciousness, namely discover, try to discover the organic structures that yield these phenomena, maybe that will yield a result like Newton's theory of motion. Uh, explanatory theory, but not one we can conceive of in the sense of